apologize because I know so many people are tired of hearing about AI, but I cannot fight this urge. It's like Gollum with the one ring here. The more and more I read about this dweeb, the less and less I can resist speaking about it. An AI artist, and that is a word I'm using very loosey-goosey when referring to this gentle sir, has the chutzpah to attempt to appeal the Copyright Office's decision to reject copyright protection to his AI-generated art piece. So, you want me to talk about this? Yes. This man and his crappy AI creations needs to be stopped. Uh, homie, aren't you an AI also? I am a call sign network that spans the multiverse and keeps organized the stories and tales of the Vanjikis. I am not some low-end construct that makes dog shit art pieces. Uh, buddy? Do I need to point out where your thumbnail comes from for literally any time you're on the channel? That does not matter. A crappy placeholder image used in a YouTube video is not the same as trying to claim that one's artwork is their own. You do raise valid criticism, you very much do, but... What are we even going to talk about here? They literally rejected his copyright appeal. Like, am I just going to sit here in a video yelling for hours on end on how he should have never done this in the first place when the literal law office already told him that? No. I expect you to shitpost on this guy and make him understand how much of a bad artist he is. I mean, I can do that, but isn't going to be ironic me, the guy who used to use AI, is uh, shitposting on a guy who also is currently using AI? I mean, the situation for me, for me is different, but, like, still, uh, I did use it. Like, isn't this going to be a tad bit ironic if, you know, I make this video? I will give you $20 and take you to Burger King. Son of a bitch, I am in! Yeah, you need a hit from this kind of stuff when you deal with the stupid world that is AI artists. And it continues to amaze me because day in and day out, these stupid AI artists somehow keep going and going and going. And they will never admit that their work is not legitimate. I hate to break it to them. Like, listen to me. The only thing I really ever agree about when it comes to the whole AI debate is that it's a tool. It exists. You can use it if you choose to use it, but, uh, overall, there's not a whole lot of reasons to use it unless you're literally, uh, yeah, like, literally, unless you're stuck in a room by yourself and you have no one to fucking help you, if anything, and you don't have money to afford shit, you literally have no reason to use AI. Like, literally, unless you are stuck in this scenario right now, I would genuinely argue you have no reason to use AI whatsoever. And most people, even them, would argue even this wouldn't be an excuse to use AI in the first place. And overall, even as somebody who did used to use AI, I have to agree with people on that. There is not many reasons to use it. And even when you're in this scenario by yourself with no money or helpers, uh, if you have the skills inherently to do the things, uh, then do the things. There's not a whole lot of debate there. There's not a whole lot of room for argument. There's not a whole lot you can do to claim otherwise. And it's really just how it is. When it comes to AI, there is one harsh truth, and that is that it exists, and that if you use it, you are heavily putting yourself up to scrutiny, and logically so. Because understandably, when if you have the skill set, or if you know people with the skill sets who are willing to help you, why are you using an AI in place of them? Now, that is usually what the problem with AI is. Like, usually when you just browse the internet, that's the general upfront issue. But there's also a whole nother field to it, and that's the reality of bigger companies like to use AI to try to not hire people in the first place. And thankfully, we're seeing heavy pushback on that, and companies are realizing, oh crap, these AIs do a shitty job. People are creating bots to detect AI and all this other shit we have literal applications now that you can scan anything and it will tell you if it's ai or not now i would take all that stuff with a grain of salt because uh i have literally uh I i've done experiments on this i've written down like uh 
short like stories that are based off other stories and then i've had ai do the same thing and even from me writing it and from an ai writing it certain applications just can't tell the difference because it's like damn they're so similar but while our checking software is still a bit newer to the game and is still getting a hold of everything overall i would argue it's a pretty good thing to have like if you are worried about ai no matter how good or bad the software is I would recommend downloading a few of those applications and checking through the shit, making sure if it's AI or not. I won't stop you, but I will encourage it, actually. Because even though I'm somebody who doesn't think AI is purely evil, guess what? It, there's not a whole lot of reasons to use it. That's just the truth. There's not a whole lot of reasons to use it. And then it gets us to today, where somehow we have reached a whole new lower of the low, and this is a scenario that completely flew under my radar because I just never thought anybody would ever even you know remotely attempt something like this but here we are today where a man has trying to copyright protect his ai generative art piece yeah his ai generative art piece he's trying to copyright protect it yeah uh yeah that's <laughs> that's something all right that that's something all right buddy uh, that that's some yeah this is our lovely goober of the week here ladies and gentlemen jason michael allen and he is uh literally uh the guy who made the ever so famous if it actually pops up here yeah here we go this is the art piece that won a competition i think it actually won about two different competitions I think it might have only been one. Might have been two. Might have only been one. Not really the point here. Point is, this AI-generated art piece was so good for its time that it was art competition worthy, and it actually won one that I know of. I think it won two, but it could have only been one. And while it is interesting, and it is an interesting talking point, and I think it is interesting in terms of art history, because this is definitely a a point to be notable of because let's be honest here you know if a computer wins an art competition that ain't no joke like actually holy shit good on the computer it actually came up with some decent and good arguably and if you were to ask me i don't even think this is completely bad actually uh you know you know what the problem is you know what the problem is a computer made it a biological being did not create this no one took their hands and drew this <laughs> like that's the big issue here and a lot of problems with AI generative art is the fact that it simply takes what already exists and replicates it. I am aware of some programs that do technically make new assets and for lack of better term, I don't have better terms. This is for lack of better term. This is not what happens, but this is because I fail to have another way to describe it. Hand draws it to a point, like draws it out, digitally sketches it to a point. The autofill and the coloring and all that is like, is like a different process but i do know there are some applications like that now if this was it from an application like that or not that's really not the point like that that doesn't mean anything like listen reality is you can take stuff like this submit it to art competitions and there's a chance it can win but the reality is it's just art competitions and in a lot of cases nowadays at least you will end up getting your winning revoked like, if you put in an AI art piece and you win and it gets found out that it's AI, you know, you do the big reveal like, haha, got you. It's just going to get revoked anyway. So this is really like a one-time thing that we might not ever see again. And if we do ever see it again, it'll probably be a one-time flash in the pan and it won't mean a whole lot. And then we get to today, or rather yesterday or sometime last week. I don't know. Then we get to this stupid shit, which he somehow thought was okay. Because, yeah, while the art competition stunt was cool and all, this th th this really takes the cake for the amount of stupidity this guy is in. Are you seeing it? Are you seeing it? He's suing. He is suing. <laughs> yeah, I I'll let you soak it up for a minute. I'll let you soak it up before we, uh, yeah, soak it up, everybody. Soak it up. Now, I don't think I need to be a legal expert. I don't think I need to be an art connoisseur. Honestly, I don't even think I need to ever interact with AI in the first place in my life to just simply straight up tell you, uh, you can't 
put copyright on something you did not make what you generate does not count as what you make what you have a program do as a rough sketch does not count as what you make and even if you were to make the argument that you needed the program to help you truly flesh out the idea of what you're trying to do uh, let's say you uh well, actually, I can actually see this. You know what? Considering I can actually see this, I'm not going to shit post when I say this. Let's say, for example, you put in a prompt into an AI art generator. You know, you're trying to make it yourself. You don't have the ideas on how it goes. And then let's say uh, the AI generates exactly what you wanted to make. Like, oh my God, th this is what I would have made anyway. You know, uh, even then, you can't say it's yours. You just can't because you didn't make it. All you did was come up with a prompt for it, and I hate to break it to you, but you can't copyright claim a prompt. Much like how companies who are one word half the time can't put copyright claims or, you know, uh, trademarkings on one word. It does happen sometimes, but more often than not, it doesn't happen because you can't do that. It's something so common that everybody agrees you can't do that. For example, here's a great example. Let's say I drew a generic robot that looked like every other robot in, in sci-fi drawings ever. Like, let's say I drew something and it looked like, a, say, a B-1 battle droid mixed with a Dalek or something. Because everybody knows what a B-1 battle droid is, and because everyone knows what a Dalek from Doctor Strange is, I probably said it wrong, sorry, Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange? Doctor Who? Doctor Who, why did I say Doctor Strange? Doctor Who, I am gonna get shot. But yeah, uh, I do mean Doctor Who, a Dalek from Doctor Who. But anyway, because everyone knows what a B1 battle droid from Star Wars is and what a Dalek from Doctor Who is, I wouldn't be able to get the copyright claim or the copyright filing for my work because it's obviously so heavily derivative of what already exists and what is already super common. Or for example, let's go with another example that's robotics. Uh, I know we're comparing robotics to AI artwork here, but I'm talking about robotics in terms of design and all that shit, and that's similar to artwork, whatever. Anyway, so you know those stereotypical robot police dogs that you are seeing around a lot? If I were to make blueprints for that stuff, I wouldn't be able to trademark and copyright file or get the patent because it's derivative of what everyone else already made in the first place in terms of the robot dog. So if those examples being in place, uh, the weird examples we've chosen, yeah, you, you can't copyright claim an AI generative art piece because you didn't make it. And even if somehow you could make the argument that you somehow made it by putting in a prompt, the reality is it's so derivative of everything else that exists, nobody would let you get the copyright claim in the first place. Because, well, let's look at the art piece once again, folks. Okay, so we got a stereotypical gate into another world. We got generic Asian women and what looks like a ballroom flowed into a weird portal thing from the fifth dimension. I hate breaking it to you, but none of these concepts are new, and bringing these concepts together isn't new in the first place. I know I said Doctor Strange on accent earlier, but literally open up a Doctor Strange comic, this is what's in fucking half of them. I'm not joking to you, or watch any of the Doctor Strange movies, this is, this is what's in it. Or if you watch any movie with magic and RK shit, you will see imagery like this all the fucking time. So even in a case where somehow this was art competition worthy, it just doesn't work because I literally identified in five seconds where it could literally be derivative from. Anything RK, magical story-esque, definitely Doctor Strange. Like, let's be real here. It's, it's literally doing the... You know, from the fucking movies. It's literally doing that. <laughs> like, let, let's not mix words here. That's literally what it's doing. And I find it ridiculous that this guy even thinks that he can do this. Because it's obvious he's not stupid. Well, he is stupid, but let me clarify for one quick second. I say it's obvious he's not stupid because, first off, he's intelligent enough to actually file for copyright. So... That shows he's already great above most people. He actually understands the system to a point and what you gotta do to get your piece in to get it, you know, filled out correctly. And so it bugs me a lot that it, this guy has the competency to actually properly fill out a copyright filing for his artwork. Heavy air quotes because it's AI generative, common variety, anything. So it, it amazes me that he's smart enough to understand how the system works, but at the same time doesn't. 
Like, for example, this would be like if I knew how my car worked and how to get my car on the road, but somehow I didn't know any driving laws whatsoever. This is literally what it feels like, but the reverse. It feels like he knows the laws, but he doesn't know how to how to make the car work in this case, the car being the art, if you get what I'm saying here, comparing and contrasting, you know, it, it's just amazing to me. And like, I want to do one more thing to like spell this out even more, okay? Like, so this is going to be the last thing I promise you, but this is what I really feel like where I'm going to have the grandest point of them all. I hate to be the guy to destroy all illusions, but uh, VCSN, our famous, uh, our famous fake AI, which is just me typing into a voice bot, you know. This image isn't real. Nobody made this image. This image was made years ago. Literally generated fucking years ago. Back when Dolly 2 was a fucking around. This is literally the work of Dolly fucking 2. Like, this is years, years old. Like, this thing is ancient in terms of how it goes. But I, the point of me showing you this is, and me slightly ruining my credibility here is, well, not ruining my credibility, you guys have already known that, but for the new guys who don't know this, uh, my whole point of showing this is, even though I have used this piece, this uh, generated Dolly 2 image as a placeholder for years now, well, not years, I've used, started using it recently as a placeholder for a VCSN, but it's like this thing was made years ago. I gotta be honest with you. So, with that being said, I have had this on my computer for a hot minute. I've had it on my computer for a long, long time. I have had so many versions of this. I have done so many edits of this in Photoshop. I've done so many video edits with this. So many of my videos has this thing on it. It has that thing on it. it has VCSN, it has that current image you see. You saw it earlier in the video. And the reality is, even after I've used it that much, I wouldn't be allowed to file it for copyright. I wouldn't, because it's not my image. This might be how we all see VCSN, the character on my YouTube channel that I use for the fucking stories. In reality, it's just me typing into VoiceBot. It's not an AI, it's me typing into Microsoft fucking David. But you know, the reality is the placeholder image is. So I would never be allowed to say or copyright VCSN. I wouldn't, and I would never want to anyway, because, uh, well, I want other people to use creations and stuff like that. I don't want a restrictive internet. I just don't. But the reality is, I would never be able to say VCSN is my creation because, well, right now the placeholder image is Dolly 2. It's older Dolly. Right now we're at Dolly 3 or whatever the fuck, but it doesn't matter. Because AI is responsible for what you see as VCSN, at least the image, I can't put a copyright claim and say this is VCSN. I cannot say under copyright or under legal scrutiny that this is the Vanjic call sign network. I can't say that because right now not everything is 100% original. There is about 30% of him, that being the image, that is not original. And that one day I need to get actual art commission for him. Right now we're just using this as a placeholder. But yeah, that's my overall thoughts on this situation and I utterly hate it. I genuinely hate it. Because overall, it's more proof to me that people who try to use AI in serious capacity are not the people we need using it in serious capacity. These people aren't trying to be honest about it. They're not trying to be respectful about it either. They're not trying to... They're not trying to work with anybody here, first off, because th there is very clear, very clear societal moral guidelines on what makes you a scumbag while using it and and it's like they keep crossing the territory and they don't get it they just don't and i unfortunately have to say they and not me because i feel like i've actually been capable of listening to the fucking audiences like it's crazy for for how hated or non-viewed of a channel i am i feel like i'm one of like five people maybe who have actually listened to the fuckers when it comes to the whole ai debate and what to and not to do with it not that it really matters at this point, but it, it, it's a whole thing. Like, as someone who's used it in the past and knows it can be used as just a tool and it doesn't need to be this ultra-destructive, stupid point of contention, th that's just the thing. It doesn't need to be like this. But we have idiots like this guy who constantly make it like this. Like, this is what I mean. People like this guy, people like, ugh, fucking Quebble Cop, you know? 
it's people like this who actually are the reason why AI is bad. Because first off, if you come to this channel, we aren't destroying any any careers. We aren't replacing people. We aren't trying to file our shit for copyright. Like, click on this channel. Like, we haven't done AI anything in a minute. But if you go back and see our older AI stuff, you know, we're living proof on this channel that it can be non-destructive. But it's people like this who make it destructive and is overall the reason why I will probably never use AI in a serious capacity again. And I don't want it to be like that, but uh, if I'm to be honest here, I'd rather have it be like that than to me join alongside these fuckers and constantly claim AI is good, AI is good, AI is safe, AI is for everybody. No, it's not. Not when it's being used like this. Not when it's being abused like this. Not when this is how people want to use it. Anyway, I feel like I've talked your ear enough. I feel like we're all on the same page. I feel like we can all agree no matter where we are on the AI debate. Guys like this are fucking garbage. And we actually need to unify to do something about these fuckers. Because let me tell you, this is not an issue that will be resolved overnight. And I think we need everybody from the spectrum who is and is not for or against AI to actually join together and do something about this. Because this shit is a problem. Anyway, I have been Johnny Von Duke. You know what to do. I'll see you all next time try to not lose your brain cells over this uh it's really hard on my end so don't worry i'm here for you man just keep it together <laughs>